Hey, what's going on Weavers? Tim here again, and here are 7 essential knots that everyone should know. Many of these knots could make your life a whole lot easier. Let's get into it. Number 1. The Bolin. That's right, I said Bolin, not Bowline. This is an excellent knot to create a fixed loop at the end of a line. To tie this knot, we're going to create a clockwise loop, like so. Then you're going to take your running end and place that running end through the clockwise loop, bring it around and behind the standing end, and then with that standing end, put it back through that clockwise loop. And then from there, you're just simply going to pull on the knot and cinch it up, and now you'll have your bowl in. You can also tie the bowl in in this much faster and simpler way. I've got the standing end pinched between my middle and index finger, I'm going to lay it over the running end and kind of do a clockwise turn that brings my fingers facing upwards. And then from there, you just have to finish it off by passing that running end back through the loop you created. Pull tight and you have your bowline. in. This is a great knot to create a fixed loop at the end of the line, but at the same time, it's very easy and simple to undo. Number two, the clove hitch. This is an easy to tie adjustable knot that is great for securing lines running along a series of posts, belaying, starting lashings, as well as weak binding. To tie the clove hitch at the middle point of a line, I'm going to twist the rope away from me, creating a counterclockwise loop once. I'm going to twist it away a second time, creating a second counterclockwise loop. I'm going to place the second loop over top the first loop. And then from there, this clovage knot can be placed over top and onto whatever object you're securing it to. To tie the clove hitch at the end of a line, we're going to take our paracord, I'm going to lay it over top, whatever we're securing it to, loop it around behind and underneath the standing end, take that running end, run it over a second time, go behind and this time back around to the front put it underneath the loop that's on top. Number three, the noose knot. This knot has a lot of various applications as well as practical uses and not what you're all going to say in the comments. It's a great knot for hitching a line to an object that's also adjustable. We're going to start by creating a loop. This is the loop that we'll be securing our noose to. And then you're going to bring it back and form a bite on the other end. And then from there, we're going to start coiling our rope back towards that second bite, coiling it around all three strands. Once you've coiled your rope all the way back up to that bite, you're going to slip the running end through that bite. From there, you're going to have to find the end of the rope that corresponds with that bite, pull down on it and cinch up that coil nice and tightly. You can adjust the size of the noose by pulling on the opposite cord. Also, the more coils you add, the more friction and tension there will be when adjusting the size of the noose. Number four, the square knot, also known as the reef knot. This is a great knot for joining two lengths of rope. I've got my two cords that I need to join. I'm going to pass the white over top of the green and tie a overhand knot. And then I'm going to tie another overhand knot, keeping the white on top of the green. So whichever cord you use, make sure you tie the overhand knot twice with that same cord on top. When you cinch it up, you will have the square knot or reef knot. Number five, the sheet bend. This is a great knot for joining two lengths of rope that are of unequal diameter. In this case, the red strand would be the thinner diameter strand. Start by forming a bite with the thicker rope. Take your thinner rope, pass it through that bite, wrap it around the bite, and tuck it underneath itself to finish the knot and cinch up both strands and you'll have your sheet bend.
If you want to tie a double sheath pin, it's the exact same process. However, after passing the rope underneath itself once, you're going to do a second pass to form a double sheet bend. Number six, the figure eight loop. This is another great fixed loop at the end of a rope. You're going to tie a single figure eight loop by forming a bite, twisting it twice away from you, and then pulling the running end through that bite. From here, the running end on the right side will form the loop, and to complete the double figure eight, you're going to retrace that figure eight knot with the running end. And that's gonna form your figure eight knot. Number seven, the heaving line. This is a great knot that forms a weight at the end of your rope in order for it to be thrown over something or through something. This is a great alternative to the monkey's fist. Start by forming a bite at the end of your rope and then with the running end, you're gonna to begin to coil the rope around the two strands leading towards the end of that bite. The more rope that you coil, the heavier your heaving line will be. When you've come to the end of your running end, you're going to pass it through that bite. You're going to pull down on the strand corresponding to that bite to cinch it closed. And of course, this knot is much more effective with thicker diameter or heavier ropes as it will create a much more substantial weight at the end of the rope. And there we have it guys, seven essential and practical knots that will make your life much more easier. Don't forget to check the description box for extended information about each knot and I hope you all will learn these knots. As always, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you want access to exclusive videos as well as other Patreon perks, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link in the video as well as down below. If you enjoyed what I did in this video, please check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.